We're still doing gardening tips, that's right, because believe it or not, there's a lot to talk about and standing by with me is Matt Ross of Owens. Thanks for being here once yep, again, sir. glad to be here. We've got all kinds of stuff around here. I just learned something that I didn't know, that a pumpkin technically is a squash. Yeah, it's actually in the cucurbit uh, genus. Cucurbit so, genus. Or, or cucurbita. Um, so when you uh, yeah. deal with these guys, uh, sometimes it pays to know a little bit of Latin. Gotta soak it all in. Yep. And what I've got for us today is a wide assortment of uh, squashes. Many of them are winter squashes, so they normally have that harder outer coating, meaning they can last for a while. That's some texture right oh, there. Oh yeah, that's got the, uh, that's the beautiful, big, boy. Uh, yeah, the beautiful humps that you, that you want on your uh, Blue Hubbard. What's this little guy? You got a sweet dumpling there, I've got a buttercup, I've got a spaghetti squash and a butternut squash. And a lot of times when you deal with these, it's always important to figure out what use uh, they will have in your in your culinary desires this fall. How do you figure that out? So one of the things you can do is you can either go online, do a little bit of research, or you can kind of look at the look at the uh, flesh and understand whether or not it's going to be something that's going to be on the sweeter side or something that's going to be a little bit more on the savory side. So when I look at things like spaghetti squash, there's just about one use for spaghetti squash in my opinion, and that's using it as a pasta substitute. So maybe you're someone that's doing that gluten-free diet right now. You don't want to get into the you know the pasta. You can actually use the pulp out of this that's stringy if you fork it. Is that it, where you use the fork? Yeah. Yep, yep, and you just have to fork it and it'll actually turn it into a very light and fluffy, almost angel hair-like pasta. Neat. Uh, when I deal with butternut, butternut's got that sweeter flavor to it, mm -hmm. but it also doesn't have a whole lot of excess pulp and excess fiber in it. So when I look at it, when I, when I cut one open, this it's is very smooth. Yep, that's a butternut right there. Because it's so smooth, it makes it really good for a soup. So that's one of the reasons why a lot of times you see butternut soup or acorn mm -hmm. uh, soup. Now when I get into things like buttercup, buttercup is a very, very sweet, high sugar loaded uh, squash. So those of you that are out there that love that little sweet tooth, this is one that you can use in both side dishes and in desserts. Um, it's something that plays very well. If you add butter to any of these, they're going to taste great. But it does really good with cinnamon and honey as well. All right. Now when I get into my Turk's Turban, which is one of the most unusual squashes you will ever see. Oh, my. It's Look about at the that most guy. beautiful thing you could ever ask for. You shouldn't even and cut that open. That should just <laughs> sit on your table all winter as a, as a centerpiece. And it'll sit there for a while for you. And it's really cool. If you find just the right one, it's great if you have kids and you go down to the you know, farmer's market. Yeah. These only range about 75 cents to about $2 at the farmer's market. So they're absolutely gorgeous. And in terms of uh, being a beautiful display, they're all going to... Uh, work out very well on the table and they last a while. So the nice thing there is you can use this as your now, Thanksgiving Day now centerpiece. Now is this an unusual one to have these, it's the shape that's, like this? Nope, that's the style of Turk's Turban. Wild, Turk's have, uh, Turban, I love it, wild, my new favorite. Well, the wild look to it. And one thing you can do with this is use it as a centerpiece for the Thanksgiving Day holiday. Right. Then after Thanksgiving, maybe a week or even two weeks later, cut the top off and you can actually use this as a bowl for soup. So Sweet. you can get really inventive. It's one of those things that you can do to really spice up a, uh, a regular, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday night. You, you Martha know, Stewart, you. Amazing. <laughs> nice stuff. And I've got red curry squash. I've got red Hubbard. And we're going to talk a little bit more about these Hubbards because they've got a really awesome history How with our Thanksgiving holiday. Huh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a little bit that's heavier than what you right might there. expect. No, that's nice. Well, great. Matt Ross, uh, we're going to come back and we're going to talk about uh, actually whipping these up into something that we can see. Oh yeah. Eat. Yeah, and we got we a pie waiting here for you guys. So beautiful. beautiful. It's gonna be a great morning. A little uh, gardening tip action, and right now is when it really gets exciting in my book because we're talking about eating some of these good looking gourds. And Matt Roth's with me, of course, from Owens. And uh, Matt, you brought some edible stuff. Here. Oh yeah, brought a nice little spread out here. Eat. So one of the things that you're noticing is this beautiful blue Hubbard pie that I got from Miles Bakery down in BG. And it's really amazing uh, to think that there's this conspiracy going on in America. What's because that? we normally think of pumpkin pie being these beautiful little pie pumpkins. Right. I but love the commercial, pie. the commercial pumpkin that you normally buy. So if I look at this label right here, uh -huh. does it look like a pumpkin to you on the front there? Or does it look a little bit more like this guy right here? It looks here? like this. And what, what is this? Is this, this is a red a pumpkin? Yeah, that's a red Hubbard pie. Or red Hubbard. So that red when Hubbard you get, squash? When you get, yep, it's a squash that's cubed up. It's got really strong heart meat to it. And it's actually what you get most of the time when you get pureed pumpkin for pumpkin pies. Mm, I thought they were just little pumpkins, but they're actually a little squash. And you can still use your pie pumpkins, and that's right. the way that most people still traditionally make their own pies. So if you look at the pie that we're looking at right now, 
It's got a little bit more of a blue, almost a darker coloration to it, and that's because we're using this beautiful blue Hubbard squash. Right. Good thing about this is that it's really, really, really thick inside, so the meat is really stacked in. So when I look at a Hubbard about this big, this is about the extent of the pulp and the seed that I'm going to have inside that would be unusable. Okay. And then what I can do with these seeds, since I'm not going to put them in the pie, you is use I can all roast part, these. You use oh, all, yeah. all oh, parts yeah. of your gourd. I can use most of my squash seeds at about 250 for anywhere between 45 minutes or an hour uh -huh. to make toasted uh, seeds to go along with it to have a healthy snack. Sweet. When I have my pie this year, one of the things I might think about adding to it is this beautiful Asian pear that we have. Mm -hmm. So if you want to dig in here. I typically don't like pear. Now this is not this your typical pear. Like pear. Go for it. Go for it. So this is from Whit Orchard, a local orchard, and this is just an amazing flavor that you're going to get out of this pear. That is so good and unlike anything I've ever tasted before. See what you need to do now is share that with the pie, and I'm telling you it's the perfect pairing. So they I'm talk about have... people uh, pairing wines with their meals. You can pair your fruits and vegetables together with your meal. Right. You got a nice mix of nuts here. It looks like a complete meal to me. Oh yeah, definitely. Fantastic. Well, great, Matt. What, do you, uh, what special are you doing for Thanksgiving this year? Uh, I'm going back to see the folks. Uh, I'm from the Detroit area, so uh, I'm going to see the folks, the grandparents, the whole big deal. So. Well, we're thankful you've been with us all this time. We look forward to seeing you again. Thank you very much. All righty, thank Best you. And enjoy you that pie. Family. Hopefully uh, the studio will I, have a, a nice sweet start to the morning. I will. Thanks a lot for breakfast. Certainly appreciate it. That's Matt Ross from Owens.